American cowboy that we know today is a, a culmination of West African heritage and the Spaniards, which the West Africans are herdsmen, and they're still herdsmen today. During the slave era, they were brought here for their herdsmanship. The herdsmen worked their cattle with dogs, sticks, and rocks, and whistling and sounds. And that culmination of those two people put together made the expert horsemen. And every third cowboy back in that era was of either Spanish, Indian, or some African descent. That's why they call cowboys. Back in those days, a white man would call you a boy, if, even if you was if you, like 100 years older than him. That's what he would call your boy. So that's why this cowboy come in there. And most of the black cowboys, you, they'd be out on the ranch. We would do all the work. So whatever was supposed to be done out on the ranch, well, the black cowboy would do it. But Hollywood would have you believe that there weren't anything but Anglo-Saxon cowboys. It's uh, the rich, rich, rich heritage and history that has been not fairly documented. Going into Chicago, I saw a sign that said, Black Cowboy the forgotten man of the West. And after doing research, I always thought when I was growing up, I didn't know anybody but the Long Ranger and Roy Rogers. And kids now are beginning to know the history, but we go to some shows back in the day, they let all the school kids out and the little black kids would come up to you and feel you and take off running because they had never experienced black cowboys. From the guys that I've talked to that, that have told me about the rodeo back in the day when it was the Rodeo Cowboy Association, RCA, which is now known as the PRCA, and it was predominantly white, and you had to be invited in through two of the cowboys that were already there, which had to, most of the time was one or two of the white cowboys who invited you in. That brought about some of the associations that were created by blacks, uh, cowboys that worked on ranches, that are on are actual working ranches, who created rodeos for themselves. Floyd Frank is uh, on record. I think him and his brother were the first black guys to put on a black rodeo, and that was in the uh, Anahuac area between Beaumont and Houston. I always wanted a rodeo ring of my own, and I worked, and then after I got the rodeo ring, I said, well, I need the rodeo stock. I bought the rodeo stock, and I take it in and then uh, take them out to different places and, and rent them out so, you know, they'd have a shoot. So that's, that was my way of life. It's been four generations in this family of Franks, four generations of cowboys, rodeo promoters, <clears throat> horse trainers, calf ropers, uh, uh, any of the, uh, the parts that you would play in a rodeo? Black cowboys would come from a long, 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 long ways. When I was coming up, we had one rodeo a year. That was on Easter Sunday. And the rest of the time, we was out on the ranch working cattle and stuff. So the issue of segregation in rodeos was true. So that made us have backyard rodeos, midnight rodeos, so to speak. And when we had midnight rodeos, I was taught to excel in whatever I tried to do. And I was taught that way by segregation. Whereas segregation said to us in our school, our instructor said back then, you'd have to be as twice as good as the white man to make it in this world, which doesn't all in every hold true. But it was a concept they would give us, making us the incentive to motivate our thinking personally. Only thing I wanted to do was be the best. It wasn't trying to beat somebody just because I was black and they were white. It was riding with the best because at the black rodeos, the guys that rodeoed there were just as tough as the guys that rodeoed anywhere else. Black cowboy didn't have much of a chance. I was nothing but a little kid. I remember Rufus Green. They used to come with some white guys, you know. And if you didn't run with a white man that had trucks and trailers, you couldn't go nowhere. And those that was around the country, they had to back their horse in the, the truck in the ditch like this here and jump their horse in the back of the truck to make it to a rodeo. <laughs> uh, my daddy's first cousin, name was Leo Frank, and he owned a mule that he called Honeysucker that knew how to do all kinds of tricks. And in 1953, he bought a brand new 53 Pontiac four-door and took the back seats out of it, and he would put that mule <laughs> in the back seat of that car and haul him all the way up to Oklahoma 
and he would, they, they would hire him as a bullfighter at these rodeos like this. But when they saw that he could ride a bareback horse and he could ride a bull or he could rope like that, they would let him participate. And he was good friends with a, a lot of rodeo cowboys. So when you was liked amongst the white guys, you wasn't discriminated against. But if you was just an outsider coming in and you were really good and they saw that you was a real competitor, that's where the problem came in at. Rodeo and back in the days, it was just a part of life. Like I say, it wasn't the Cowboys. The prejudice side was the town that you went to right here in Texas. And Murtis Dykeman, I guess, was the first that started blacks to ride with whites because they sent a newscast in Little Town in Alice, Texas to do a story. He was new on a book called Yellow Fever that had nobody ever written. And he thought he had lost his job. He didn't see yellow fever. He went to the stock producer and say, hey, they told me yellow fever was coming out tonight. He said, yeah, but he going after the rodeo. And that's what it was. Blacks would always ride after the rodeo. They sent everybody home. Then they would let the black cowboys ride. And then Murtis Dykeman rode the bull, yellow fever. Had to ride in about 16, 17 seconds. And the next day in the newspaper in Alice, Texas, it was out that Yellow fever had been rolling. People in Alice, Texas, they almost stoned the RCA because they say, we felt like we were deprived the best part of the rodeo to see somebody ride yellow fever. So this got the attention of the RCA. And when they say that any time a black man would ride after a rodeo, it had to be two whites ride after the rodeo too. And that's what they, the whites didn't want to ride after rodeo, so they Say let's let them rodeo with us. And Murtis Dykeman was the first one that did this, but Willie Thomas was the guy that never got the credit because he came along way before time for the black cowboys. He's the one that really broke the ice for black cowboys. Well, he started at the A.P. George's ranch when he was rodeoing back when he was a feeder. He was brave enough to jump down on him and start just riding him with no hands. So that's what led him into rodeoing. And the first time he was out in a rodeo, I think he won a third. He never bucked off a buzz, not a, in a long time. I think he rode about 50 or 60 buzz in a row before he ever got bucked off. Back in the 50s, I remember he was in the top 20 in the professional rodeo. Back then, they wouldn't draw right. They'd give him the baddest bull. They thought they'd never been rode. And then they started letting him ride during the show. A couple of shows he had to go to, it was so racial, and he had to have, you know, pull his hat way down on his face, and they couldn't tell who he really was. So he had to sneak in and ride. And then once he got on his bull and rolled his bull after he, whatever he did, whether he rolled or got thrown. And so he had to hurry up and get out of there because it was so, so bad. But that's just the way it was back then. He couldn't do nothing about it. I grew up on a ranch. My dad was a cowboy. My grandfather was a cowboy and his dad was a cowboy. I started rodeoing at the age of 15. I started going to rodeos, uh, black rodeos. Then I wanted to go to white rodeos. When I was in um, the 70s, 71, I tried to enter some rodeos and they wouldn't let me enter some of them because I was black. When you drive uh, 100 miles to a rodeo and they tell you you can't ride, and that kind of discourages you, you know, you want to quit. 